So let's do a short exercise. So here we go. You have a picture there for yourself. What is in that picture? Um, where was this, that picture taken? What is happening in that picture? I'll give you five seconds. Five, four, three, two, one. Okay, let me show you this picture. So here you go. Did you say that was a cowboy? Uh, very good for you. Did you say that he was riding on a horse? Wow. How did you guess he was riding on a horse? You only saw a hat. How did you guess that it was a cowboy riding on a horse? That is your schema interpreting what's going on. Taking a little piece of information and your schema filling in the gaps. Let's do another one of those. What's in that picture? Where was the picture taken? What is happening in the picture? Okay, I'll give you five seconds again. Five, what is in that picture? War, where was it taken? Three, what is happening? Two, one. All right, did you guess this was Saturn? All right, and where was it taken? Obviously, um, outer space, right? Uh, those of you who got it was Saturn, again, it's your schema filling up the gaps. Um, let's do another one. What is in that picture? Where was it taken? What is happening in the picture? Five, four, three, two, one. Did you guess it was a giraffe? All right, very good for you if you did. All right, uh, what's happening in the picture? Um, it was a giraffe, giraffing, right? So the quest second question, which is where was this picture taken? Um, you might have guessed, we, we don't really know, right? But some of you might have said Africa, others might have said the zoo. And why do some say Africa and others the zoo? Uh, it's your schema filling in the gaps. So if you associate the giraffe with Africa, then you probably guessed Africa. But if you associate the giraffe with the zoo, then you probably said the zoo. So basically, schema provides these structures that aid in understanding. Uh, and they fill the gaps when necessary. So who are these people? Uh, what are they doing? Why are they there? It's very clearly uh, a classroom, right? Um, did you guess a classroom? You have to have guessed a classroom, but there's no teacher. And it's a differently designed classroom than the ones that we're used to. Um, so how did you guess that was a classroom? What are they doing? Well, they're taking class, right? And why are they there? Because uh, they're, they're paying for their university, right? Because that's what you're experiencing, uh, even though it's not exactly in this context. Uh, last one. So this is who? Who are they? Who are they? All right? What are they doing? What are they talking about? Um, why are they there? So... People usually guess that these people right here are in a business meeting because you see uh, things like the computer and the charts and, uh, you know, he's got a pen, so they're writing. Um, so it's a business meeting, right? Uh, why are they there? They're talking about the business. Uh, and who are they? They're, they're business people, right? They're a company. And if I ask you, who is the boss in this picture? Who do you say? People usually say, this guy is the boss, but why can't she be the boss? And people would say, oh, because he's sitting at the head of the table and that's where the boss sits, right? That is your schema making up assumptions. Okay, so let's look at another picture here. Who are the people in this picture? What are they doing there? What are they talking about? Uh, why are they there? See, usually people say one of two things. One is he's going to propose, and two, they're on their honeymoon. Uh, that's the usual choices. If you chose something different, it's probably going to be because your schema interpreted it another way. So, for example, if, if you interpreted something like he is her best friend, friend and he's going to ask her to be his girlfriend um maybe there's some schema there attached to that guess so 
there's really this really looks like a romantic dinner but is it a romantic dinner or is it your schema telling you that it is right so that's the things that happens with schema right let's do one more what is this this is a basic question simple question what is this five four three two one Huh, that's natto, which is a um, fermented soybean um, food that Japanese people eat. It is slimy, and people say you either love it or you hate it. I've never had it, so I don't know. So what did you guess? Did you guess it was cereal? Did you guess it was beans? Uh, did you guess it was something else? Uh, your schema filled in the gaps and told you it was something um, and you got it wrong, right? Try another one. Where are these people? Five, four, three, two, one. So basically, I'm sure that what you did was, okay, there's a lake, there's uh, people rowing, there's someone in the background there. So this must be like, like a nature park, uh, like somewhere out in nature, right? Uh, well, actually, you'd be surprised. That is New York City. That is Central Park in New York City, right smack in the middle of one of the biggest cities, uh, most business cities in the world. Huh, why didn't you guess that was New York City? Because... Well, your schema told you that it had to be nature. Uh, and it sort of is nature, but it's right smack in the middle of a big city, right? Okay, next one. What is this? Let's see if you get this one right or if you get this one wrong again. Five, four, three, two, one. Some answers that I've gotten in the past are this is... Um, an air conditioning system you know there's houses it sort of looks I don't know what is it what is that um, well it is a drill of people uh, in the 50s doing a drill for um, radiation in their radiation suits um, so did you guess that um, if you did not guess that whatever you guessed you filled in the blanks with your schema and got it wrong so that's sort of the point that I'm trying to make, that if a student encounters a text that is unfamiliar to them, they will overcompensate by either slowing down or by guessing, uh, filling in the gaps with their schema, which might really not help them in understanding, but rather make them get it wrong. So if you're reading something and you don't have enough schema for it, then that basically means that you're going to get it wrong most of the time. Uh, that's why schema is so important. You're not going to understand what you read, so you're going to assume, and you're going to assume incorrectly. Um, you're going to listen to a conversation, and then you're going to guess, and you're going to guess incorrectly what the, what the conversation said. So schema is super important, and schema is not only a little piece of background knowledge about something, about the exercise that you're doing but it's actually about the world so what do we do with the schema students already know or already have and the schema that they don't have but that they need to be able to understand so basically schema needs to be in the classroom okay it needs to be there because if not your students will not get connected to what they're doing it will not make sense to them they will not be able to interpret what's happening, right? So how do you get it into the classroom? You can activate it or you can build it. That means if you activate it, you are bringing out what students already know into the classroom. You're making them aware that they already know about these things and these things relate to what you want them to do in class. So you can show them pictures, ask students what they know, you can find similar concepts, Right. But what happens if they don't know something? If they don't know it, what do you do? Well, it's not that complicated. You build it. 
in, in other words, you put them in touch with that that thing that they don't know. You sort of teach it to them, right? So that they have the experience that they can relate to whatever they're reading. In other words, you are connecting students' knowledge with new content. And it could be something as simple as pre-teaching vocabulary, right? Or uh, just having a discussion or asking students to share their experiences with other students that haven't had the same experiences. Um, sharing text, showing them a video. There's thousands of ways of doing this. And this is what we'll be talking about in our next lesson. So for now, I'll conclude here. I'll stop. And then during our next lesson, we'll talk more about schema and we'll talk about how it plays into the receptive uh, skills and how it plays into your classroom and where you can put it in, where you can activate it, where you can build it. And thinking already about how we're going to start planning for the activities that we're going to do during the semester. So I hope uh, you have a clear understanding of what schema is, and I'll see you in class.